My name is Jim Hansen. I'm the Vice President of Product Strategy for SolarWinds Applications, Infrastructure, and Security. Um, I uh, have actually presented at Tech Field Day once before, and I'm super excited to be here again today. What we're going to talk about today is a couple of things. Number one, we're going to go through a little bit of background on who SolarWinds is. We're going to talk a little bit about the APM market. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the APM suite, really how our APM products help IT organizations solve pretty foundational application problems. And for those of you who aren't familiar with SolarWinds, SolarWinds has been around for about 20 years. Uh, we started in 1999. And when we did, we were really focused on delivering network solutions to network engineers to go solve very specific networking related problems. Over the years, we've expanded into a few different areas. Uh, we've expanded into systems. So we went from network into systems and started providing solutions in that area as well. We moved from there into cloud. And of course, with that, we have continued to build out everything from security to uh, ITSM and so forth and so on. Um, when you look at us through the lens of, of just the markets themselves, we actually do hold a pretty prominent position in a couple of these different markets, everything from network management to systems management and so forth and so on. All right, so if we take a look at the, the background of, of SolarWinds here, first and foremost, what we deliver to uh, IT professionals is uh, applications and solutions that, that vary across all things IT. So as I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, anything that an IT type of individual would need to leverage in order to understand what's happening within their infrastructure network, infrastructure itself, database, application, all things IT, security, service management, all of those different solutions are made available through SolarWinds today. Um, we often get asked, uh, who is it that we actually focus on? Who do we actually try to actually provide solutions for? And it's pretty much anybody who's doing IT. So everything from IT operations, IT security, DevOps, developers, um, all of those different functions play a significant role in, in what we deliver from a solution perspective. And of course, in terms of the types of solutions and, and where those solutions help organizations, it's pretty much wherever IT actually is. So everything from on-premises to private cloud, public cloud, all of these different environments. Now, we focus pretty heavily in terms of our development uh, processes on these very fun fundamental five principles. Number one, the software solutions that we build, we really try to focus on just ease of use. Um, and, and when you think about it, right, there's a lot of IT solutions out there that are complex they're difficult to use, uh, requires ridiculous amounts of professional services type stuff to get going. And we've really been pretty good over the years at just really focusing in on those foundational problems that IT people have um, so we can solve those problems. Um, we do because there are some organizations out there that, that need it. We do have offer professional services type things too, but it's actually not through us. Um, we have certified partners that we work with because fun fundamentally it's not really part of our business. Um, we do really focus on user centricity. So, you know, when you think about what it is that a user does and how they interact in their jobs, like who are they, what do they do? This is something that if you're an existing SolarWinds customer, you probably know somebody within either the product team or our user experience team at some point in time is likely either has reached out or will reach out at some point in the future um, to ask you questions. And, and the point of that is, is that we really take our users to heart. And it's something that is super important to our ethos. And it's, it, it allows us to really really focus on how do we deliver the best value to our customers that makes sense and solves, again, those foundational problems that they have. And of course, everything from modularity, scalability, um, you know, we serve every from, everyone from the, the very small of businesses to the very large. Um, and then this last piece is, piece is really important too. You know, from a pricing standpoint, you know, you, you get out there and you look at these really big IT solutions and they cost an arm and a leg. What we've actually found is that the way that our business model works, if we really focus on delivering the value that we are delivering, um, we can actually deliver solutions at a super low affordable price. And so that's something that, again, if you th sort of think about those basic principles, this is it. This is what we focus on as a business across the board. So let's go to switch gears here and let's talk about APM. So I'm sure a number of you folks really already have a pretty clear idea of what application performance management is, but at, at a high level, it's just an umbrella term that covers the IT monitoring and management lifecycle for software applications, right? It's getting visibility into what an application is doing, 
how it's functioning. Is that application actually performing well? And ultimately, is the end user experience for that application actually working in the way that you would expect as a business? And that could be everything from just a simple API that you're making available, or it could be an actual um, end user application that people are logging into and interacting with, um, or it could actually be an internal application. So whatever it is that your business actually operates under, these are the things that that application man performance management are really designed to be able to help you go do. And it, it ranges from everything from code level diagnostics down to actually just measuring basic uh, end user satisfaction levels. When you kind of break this down into its fundamental pieces, what you see is number one, first and foremost, it's about monitoring and optimization performance of the entire uh, application stack. And, and I use the word modern here because as, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, things have changed quite a bit in terms of how organizations are developing applications, where those applications actually reside, and of course, how those applications are being used. But when you look at kind of the foundation of what application for performance management is, it includes things like profiling and distributed tasting, which, which really comes down to, can you get visibility into the application itself? Kind of dig into it, see the application code, uh, see what's going on in terms of calls that are being made either to the database or cross microservices that might exist within the infrastructure that's being used for that application and so forth. But in addition to that, it also includes things like transaction performance. What's the response time look like? The throughput? Is this application performing in a way that makes sense? Because it could be up, it could be functional, but it may not be performing. And, and think about it, if you're a, a retail organization or um, you know, a, a, an online e-commerce type of system, if that thing's not performing, the users that you're expecting to come in and buy your, uh, your products or services might actually go someplace else. So that response time and throughput becomes super important. And then, of course, infrastructure performance. Of course, every application, whether it's one that you're developing and building in a cloud infrastructure or within a Kubernetes environment in the cloud, or even if you're just building it within your own data center, um, it all has infrastructure. And you have to be able to look at that infrastructure to understand when an application failure happens, where is it actually broken? Is it the application? Is it the network? Is it the system? It's kind of like an age old uh, challenge that everybody tries to, hey, it's not my fault. Meantime to innocence, go find somebody else. That's their problem, right? So really just trying to make sure that it is performing well is fundamentally what IT's job is. And so this is something that's pretty critical to APM as well. And then of course you look at things like digital user experience. So availability, performance, real user monitoring, all of that capability exists within application performance management as well. And then lastly, when you look at things like events and logs, right? Every single thing uh, that you have within the infrastructure actually produces some kind of event, some kind of log stream where you take that, you put it into a log management type solution, and you go look at that data to try to understand, hey, what's going on? When a transaction actually takes place, you can look at it through the lens of code profiling and transaction monitoring, but at the same time, you probably wanna go look at the log data because you're gonna learn a lot from the system side or the infrastructure side of things in addition to the application itself. And so that's a really key part of how this application performance management market continues to evolve. So the challenges for all of this are, are pretty simple, right? If you think about some of the, the, the transformational business changes that are taking place within uh, organizations, it comes down to really these three things, right? You've got business digitalization, uh, business processes and custom applications that are actually the, more or less the lifeblood of, of the infrastructure, right? Applications are ultimately what allow your users, your customers, your partners, your supply chain, all to interact with the business in, in a pretty discreet clear kind of way. And so it's important for that, that those, those business processes to actually function and work. And when something's broken anywhere along that train, you gotta be able to get in there and figure out what's going on. Um, and that brings us then to the second piece here, which is tr transaction performance, right? Those applications, whether it's an API or an actual application, they have to be up. They have to be performing. They have to be cost effective. Otherwise, you can't actually maintain the business. So these are some of the challenges that are actually driving more, a lot of organizations to go look at APM type solutions. And of course, there's just foundational technical challenges, right? And I mentioned this notion of mean time to innocence just a moment ago. When you look at these complex environments, um, sometimes it's pretty hard to figure out, is something up? Is it not up? Um, why are things actually slow? You know, and if they are slow, where are they slow? And to be able to kind of narrow down and troubleshoot and find those problems is actually pretty challenging, right? And of course, monitoring all of that can be really tricky. 
So when you look at the difference between a lot of the modern custom web applications and SaaS products and things like that, right? We know that the application stack that is being utilized by various organizations is changing pretty dramatically. Um, we have everything from shifts in architecture, right? The, uh, the difference between the old kind of monolithic types of applications as opposed to the new fancy microservice container-based types of technologies. You have accelerated delivery of code into production environments through CICD pipelines and various other more rapid methods of being able to deploy software very quickly. Of course, with, with, with rapid deployment of code also introduces a ton of risk. And when something breaks, uh, you need to be able to go identify those problems and, and go fix those problems as quickly as possible. There's a proliferation of languages and services and containers and architectures. Like all of these things are super complex. And if you think about it, everything that, that is being utilized today from an application development standpoint, yeah, sure, there's appliances and things like that out there. But for the most part, all of those custom applications that are getting built are really virtualized. Everything from compute to network to storage, uh, they're in one cloud, they're in a hybrid cloud environment, they're in a public cloud. And all of those infrastructures that are being used by these different businesses in the end are actually super complex. It actually helps transform and speed the delivery of services and products to the world. But at the same time, again, it introduces this level of risk and level of challenge that kind of comes along with it. And again, this is where these APM solutions really become pretty valuable. So to dig into that just a tiny bit more, when you look at it through that lens of applications and infrastructure and containers and services and hosts, right, the world has changed pretty dramatically, right? You know, whereas before we would actually go and we would build applications, we might put them into our on-premises virtual environment. Uh, maybe it's VMware, maybe it's Hyper-V, uh, maybe it was Zen or something else. And so when you start to look at that, now things have changed quite a bit, right? Uh, the infrastructure that we're using is now a little bit more distributed. Uh, we have on-premises virtual and physical servers. We've got private cloud, public cloud. Um, we've got even government-related cloud environments where things start to exist depending on the business that you're in. And of course, you have containers and services and all of these things. All of that is incredibly complex, right? And ultimately, this is where the business owners, all the way down to the actual system administrators, like everybody's got a stake. When something breaks, Again, it could be at the application level. It could be something even between the application and the end user. That end user might be inside the infrastructure. That end user today, with COVID especially, could be outside the environment, right? In, in some part of the world where they're trying to access an application or service and some connectivity point between them and you is actually broken. And so all of these key stakeholders have a really important role to play as part of understanding, identifying, troubleshooting, and ultimately solving these problems from an APM perspective. And this is where SolarWinds more or less comes into play. So our SolarWinds APM suite, which is part of this Cloud Field Day, we're going to go into a little bit more detail and provide you some, demo, uh, some demos and things like that around, um, is uh, really designed for helping organizations monitor and manage their hybrid infrastructures related to their applications. Um, and this could be applications that are in the cloud. It could be applications that are sitting on premises. Um, it could be applications that sit across both, meaning you've got pieces and parts that are on-prem and other things that are in the cloud, and you have to have a way to be able to see them both, right? But this is essentially what the APM suite is designed to do. And the APM suite basically includes three major components. There's a product called AppOptics, which is really designed around application and infrastructure performance monitoring. We've got Logly, which as it sounds is log management. And then we have a product called Pingdom, which is about end user experience monitoring. Now let's dig into Pingdom real quickly. And again, we've got some sessions which we'll go into a little bit more detail, but I just wanted to give you at least a high level picture of, of what it is that we do. So at, at the high level, right, think about it from an end user perspective. Your end user is coming to your site, they're coming to your application, they're coming to uh, maybe programmatically to an API that you need to be able to you know, deliver capability and or services. And what Pingdom is designed to do is actually provide visibility into that web application and the end user experience. And we do that through everything from uptime monitoring to page speed, transaction monitoring, and real user monitoring, right? And those things are actually designed so that when we identify some kind of issue, some kind of failure, some, some sort of uh, deterioration of service, for that end user, we have the ability to kind of flag that alert on it so that an IT person can actually go take a look at it. But of course, that's really just the first step, right? You know, there's a lot more to it after that. Now, there's a ton of stuff behind the scenes that um, make this possible. Um, I won't get into any of the detail here. 
Um, but what happens typically is that when you actually get into the end user side of things, eventually you're going to be asked, okay, there's a problem. Now what's going on under the hood? How do I go figure out where that problem is? How do I understand how to go solve that problem? And this is then where the app optics product comes into play. And app optics is a little bit more about seamless application and infrastructure monitoring. And so as we were talking about just a few minutes ago, this is where we have things like trace and visualize uh, the, the ability to trace and, and visualize application bottlenecks, monitoring the actual server and the infrastructure, and of course, getting visibility into the actual code itself that exists within the application. And this is the, the ability to kind of say, hey, here's this call that's being made to a database. And that database call is taking a lot longer than it normally does. And it's perhaps that database call that is actually the problem, which is preventing your users from having a, a solid experience. And so this distributed capability, the ability to kind of connect that then to all of that infrastructure data on the log side that comes into play is really important. And so again, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on this later, but App Optics is that piece that allows you to get that application level visibility, right? So you start with the end user experience, you find your way into the application, and then of course there's the third component, which is basically uh, the Logly application, right? And the Logly application is, uh, as I mentioned, logs, right? And so when you're looking at a trace, we have the ability to kind of trace down into the log data, and we call it trace context in logs. And that's really important because the ability to be able to quickly identify problems and get to that root cause is super important, right? And so Logly kind of gives you that, uh, that full stack, multi-source log aggregation and monitoring and data analytics um, so that you can start to dig in and really understand what's going on, right, underneath the hood. In a nutshell, that's essentially what the SolarWinds APM suite is actually all about. And again, in the next few sessions, we're gonna walk through a lot more detail on this. So whether you're a, an organization that has a bunch of older, more monolithic kinds of applications or some sort of service-oriented architecture, or if you're using some of the newer fancy microservice-based methods of building applications, you can basically go and get a ton of visibility into all of these applications through distributed tracing, infrastructure monitoring, and user metrics and logs which ultimately just makes it a little bit easier for all of those IT folks that are looking to understand, hey, where's my application broken, to understand from a simple, a powerful, and kind of affordable sort of way how to actually go do that.